ankle fracture update. This is video four of four from the OTA resident core curriculum lecture series, uh, slides by Dr. Christopher Lee. I am Saqib Rahman narrating, and um, we already talked about everything above. We're now going to talk a little bit about outcomes and a little word about diabetic ankle fractures. So um, this particular study looked at predictors of short functional outcome following ankle fracture surgery, and at one year, most patients are doing relatively well. Um, younger, ma uh, younger age, male sex, absence of diabetes, lower ASA anesthesia class as predictive of functional recovery at one year. What about what predicts poor outcomes? Well, advanced age, osteoporosis, diabetes, peripheral vascular disease, female sex, higher ASA class, smoking, alcohol use, lower level of education, uh, as reported in multiple studies. So does osteoarthritis occur? Sure, it can occur. The mean latency time between injury and end-stage osteoarthritis is about 21 uh, years. It's correlated with fracture severity, complications, older age at the time of injury. And you can see that... Uh, on that uh, survival curve. What about complications? Well, um, perioperative uh, issues can lead to this, malreduction, inadequate fixation, intraarticular hardware penetration. So those are things within your control. Uh, it can happen in the early post-op period, wound edge, dehiscence and necrosis. And you know, people uh, sometimes don't really appreciate um, the uh, you know, potential for wound complications when you're when you're fixing these fibular fractures. Uh, so sometimes we didn't talk a lot about timing, but sometimes, you know, when you're operating on these cases, um, some surgeons will feel the need to wait until soft tissue swelling allows for safe management, kind of like they would with pylon fractures. So that's something to, to to take into consideration is when you should operate on these, and does that play a role in? Uh, um, your, your skin flaps. Um, late complications include stiffness, uh, distal, uh, distal tip fibs and osteosis, malunion, nonunion, as we talked about, arthritis, hardware-related complications. I mean, these are uh, implants that can be fairly subcutaneous and uh, can irritate patients and need to be removed later. A few words on diabetic ankle fractures. So uh, what's the problem, right? Well, the problem is that uh, you can have a fracture that you fix that looks pretty good and you feel like you've done adequate fixation here um, and you can see that uh, fracture like this goes on to fail. Like, well, why is that? Well, I mean, to some extent, diabetic fractures are slower to heal, right? And also, uh, patients have uh, neuropathy, right? So they may not be able to identify when a problem is happening, um, and um, you have higher risk of wound complications as well. So uh, diabetic patients more likely to have wound complications. Uh, they lack protective sensation if they're neuropathic. They may have poor bone quality as well. So do you just avoid treating these? Well, probably not because they can also do very poorly uh, non-operatively. So un if they're unstable, they probably still need to be treated with with uh, AO principles, anatomic restoration of the ankle mortis, stable internal fixation. Um, but you may need to, you know, achieving stable fixation may require um, additional fixation. Here you can see literally they're just fixing screws into the tibia, right? So-called um, uh, comb, comb technique or there's other words, uh, descriptors used for this. Some people may say there's multiple syndesmotic screws, whatever it is. You know, the fibula is a very short bone. You're getting like 12 millimeter screws across it. So in order to increase your stability, one technique in diabetic patients is literally to fix the fibula all the way across into the tibia. And you're not taking these out. So you may need to uh, also um, forego early motion and early weak bearing in certain diabetic patients and... Uh, you know, uh, put things in favor of wound healing and avoiding complications uh, by minimizing uh, weight bearing, maybe even casting them. Uh, and in debilitated low demand neuropathic patients, you may require extreme measures as shown here. So sometimes uh, if you want to avoid severe complications in a Charcot joint and 
uh, in, a, in a neuropathic patient especially, um, osteosynthesis may not be the best choice. Uh, and a lot of times something like this, a tibio tail or calcaneal nail is a salvage treatment, but um, it could also be a primary treatment in extreme cases. So just something to keep in mind. We're not going to talk about that too much here. So to summarize the entire uh, four videos here, this lect uh, lecture slide deck, you want to, you should be able to now recognize normal radiographic parameters, state the indications for fibular fixation, define specific articular pathology associated with SA and PA uh, fractures, identify the common posterior malleoles fracture patterns, understand the um, uh, significance of posterior malleolus um, fixation and uh, when to fix it, and identify various ways to reduce the syndesmosis. Here are some potential helpful references for you, and that otherwise concludes our lecture on ankle fractures. Thank you.